receive this special offer for free shipping. That's OrderMaxTrainer.com. Welcome back. Well, it's better late than never. Last August, we told you about wealthy families, the one percenters, caught living in government subsidized, subsidized housing paid for by you, the taxpayer. Like a family in New York City making nearly half a million bucks a year. And now the White House rolling out a plan to kick out rich folks like that. But Mike Ozanian says this is why we need to kick out the government from the housing assistance business altogether. And that's a force flip side. Mike. That's right, EMAC. Anytime the government gets involved in something, it leads to scarcity. I mean, right here in New York City, the government has put in place a lot of so-called affordable housing, generally terrible places to live. Plus, it's boost up the prices of other non-subsidized housing. If you're a middle-class family in New York, good luck being able to afford a place to live. You know, Bill, we do want to take care of the poor, um, but should we kick the government out of housing for good? Is that the way to go? No, don't end government housing. However, fix the warped incentives. And the problem is not the occasional millionaire that's living in a housing project. The problem is somebody whose income is $1 over some line and then gets thrown out on the sidewalk as a reward for getting a job. That has to be fixed. Yeah, that has to be fixed, too. And, John, the other thing, too, is these individuals can get government-assisted housing without having to prove. They basically self-report what their income is. I think we, the government could possibly do better. What do you think? Oh, of course. Come on, Bill. The government needs to be in housing. It used to be that shoes, computers, and cars were scarce, <laughs> and then the profit motive made them all abundant. Why is housing somehow a different good from the rest? What do you think, Sabrina? Yeah, no, I, I, this is like I have a real bee in my bonnet about this issue because I find it, this, like in New York, here in D.C. and in Northern Virginia, this is happening all over the place. And when government gets into the business of housing, it, it distorts the whole market, it drives up prices, and it makes hardworking families who are trying to maybe buy a bigger house or rent a bigger yeah. space unable to do so. I think we absolutely want sensible right. economic policies to help people who are in need, but this is not it. You know, see, here's the thing. I mean, there's all sorts of fraud test forces on Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security. Low income housing is hardly anything. Any, any, basically, cops on the beat there. What do you think? Well, again, if, if you want affordable housing, let the free markets work. You can phase this out with vouchers and the like, but stop these uh, creation of these buildings for affordable housing. Uh, get rid of rent control and other things that distort the market, and you would see housing flourish for all what they used to say pocketbooks, all income levels. Entrepreneurs will do it. Uh, in free markets, Liz. Scarcities always turn into abundance when free markets are allowed to operate. Yeah, Rich. Put in housing, and uh, we won't have a problem. Rich, you've seen that in your neck of the woods over there in Silicon Valley, right? Yeah, but with the thing I can't figure out, Liz, is why do people think they have a God-given right to live in New York or San Francisco or places like that? This country used to be a lot more mobile than it is now. And uh, there are plenty of wonderful, uh, much cheaper places to live in the heartland of the United States. Yeah, who would have thought that 1% living in taxpayer-paid-for government housing? Thanks, gang. You've been